Thank you, Jeff. Those of you who are wearing the Gun Safe Live stickers, if you're going back into the building again to make the rounds of the offices, please make sure that they're on there. And if you take off your coats, make sure that you put those stickers back on so the legislators and everybody else can see them. Our next speaker, you've heard of Carl Rove, the architect. Well, we've got our own architect, and he is the architect of the repeal of the DOI ban on carrying in the National Forest. Dave Yates, give him a big hand. He spent a long time working on this, over two years. He's an executive member of the Virginia Citizens Defense League. He looked much younger when he started. He didn't have as much gray hair. Heavy as the head that wears the crown. <laughs> I'd like to uh, first make a thank you to anybody who has ever sent an email, made a phone call, visited or otherwise faxed a congressman, a senator, or anything, any elected official, any appointed official, uh, with regard to repealing the National Parks Ban. It would not have happened if you hadn't done it. About four and a half years ago, we started this, when a couple of us decided to get together and we brought this presentation to the Board of Directors of ECDL. Uh, we mentioned it to Philip several times and uh, without much hesitation at all, the Board decided that this was a good endeavor and that we would undertake this and we would win. And as you know, it turned out to be a much longer fight than we anticipated. Um, we had a lot of hurdles to overcome along the way and I'm happy to say that on January 9th at one minute after midnight, I'm sorry, one second after midnight, uh, my good friend and neighbor Terry and I were the first ones to execute uh, carrying concealed, as their rule indicates, in the national parks. We had the picture to prove it taken by my lovely wife, Carol. <laughs> Again, thank all of you for helping make that happen. You know, we submitted the petition, the first petition about four years ago, and it sat at DOI forever. But we kept at it, we kept notifying our elected officials that this was unacceptable, we wanted it fixed. And it took a long time, but eventually we got some attention from one of the undersecretaries, and eventually we got some face time with them. When we did this, you know, they promised us that we would get a fair hearing, and of course, we know that didn't happen. And I can speak pretty affirmatively that I know that did not sit well with the Board of Directors, it didn't sit well with Philip, it didn't sit well with me, and I know it didn't sit well with any of you. So, afterwards we reviewed that denial, and when we reviewed it, it looked like they were making an awful lot of assertions that didn't seem to make any sense. So, we began a Freedom of Information Act fight with the Department of Interior. Now, they have... 30 business days to respond and after about nine months they finally did and only after prodding from members of Congress and once they finally responded it became clear that the reasons for denial were pretty well made up and we took a look at that uh, we recrafted this petition a second time we resubmitted it and as you know it became you know, an accepted policy the Department of Interior decided they would change the rules, but that wasn't the end of their fight with us. They decided to make it more difficult. They did two things uh, in order to thumb their uh, opponents again. One was they restricted the uh, change in the regulation to concealed firearms only. And the second one was that they had an analogous state lands requirement, which meant that if you didn't have permission to carry in a state park or some other state land, you couldn't carry. Well, once again, we mobilized our forces. And again, Philip put out an alert. He mobilized the members of ECDL. We commented on this. And plain and simply, we defeated it. There is no more analogous state lands requirements. Once again, thank you, because you guys can go out to regulations.gov. And you can look up the comments online from VCDL that are copies or paraphrases of Phillips Alert, and you can see the volume of fire that was leveled at the Department of Interior for this. And we clearly won that. 
And that was all on the backs of BCDL and the co-petitioners. So, again, thank you. Now the other thing that they did was, uh, again, by limiting to concealed firearms, there's still a restriction in place. You cannot carry pepper gas, you cannot carry mace or taser. If you're not skilled with a firearm, that's too bad for you. So that was the one last parting shot from the OI at us. So hopefully you've all got your concealed handgun permits and you can now visit a, uh, a national park and you can be safe. So again, thank you. Thank you. Now, if there's one thing that I want you all to take home from this, if there's anything that I want you to learn from this, it's not to honor me or the board or Philip, it's to take the lesson that one person you can make a difference. And that is simply the, the, the single lesson here. All you have to do is make yourself known to your delegate, your senator, your representative in Congress, your senators in Congress. Okay, it's all very simple. If you haven't talked to them already today, your delegate, your senator, do it. If you've talked to them already today, do it again. Because they need to hear from you. The more they hear from you, the more they react. Or the more likely they'll react. And you just need to be more involved with them. There's, again, when I was introduced, I was introduced here as an executive member. I'm just a member of BCDL just like you. I'm a citizen just like you. And that's how I made the difference here. Thanks to you, all citizens and members of BCDL. So, like I said in closing, uh, you all can make a difference here by just making your voices heard. And I thank you once more.